Hello everyone, welcome to Pregnum. I am Dr. PPZ. You might have already known that Aditya L1 has reached its destination today on January 6, 2024, after four long months. In today's video, I will discuss everything you should know about Aditya L1. There are a few observatories in India to study the sun from the Earth. Aditya L1 is the first observatory planned from India to study the sun from space. It is basically a spacecraft which was launched by ISRO's famous PSLV rocket on September 2nd, 2023, continuing the trend of success and showcasing India's capabilities to the world with another successful launch. Aditya is a Sanskrit name of the sun and the spacecraft has been installed at a special location on an imaginary line connecting the sun and earth. This point is scientifically called Lagrange Point 1 or L1 for short. This point is at a distance of 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. The characteristic of this point is that the gravitational forces of the Sun and Earth allow a spacecraft to float in this space with nominal fuel consumption. As the Earth revolves around the Sun, the spacecraft moves smoothly together so that it is always in the same line between Earth and the Sun. There are four more such Lagrange points around the Earth's Sun system known as L2, L3, L4, and L5 respectively. There are two main reasons behind choosing the L1 site to house this spacecraft. The first reason is that the sun is constantly visible from this location, making it easier to study the sun continuously. And before going to the second reason, I need to explain something else, so I'll mention the second reason towards the end of the video. We know that the sun is the nearest star to the earth, so we can study the sun in more detail compared to the other stars. But why do we need to study the sun so deeply? The answer can be divided into two parts, one theoretical, the other practical. The theoretical answer is, we study the sun to try to understand the scientific reasons behind the strange phenomena occurring at various depths in the sun's atmosphere. And the practical answer is, to study the space weather, to predict the impending disasters and warn the world. Let us discuss both aspects together. The sun's core is constantly producing large amounts of energy through a process called fusion, which brings the core to a temperature of about 15 million degrees Celsius. It is not difficult to understand that the temperature gradually decreases as one moves out of the center and the temperature on the solar surface reaches about 5500 degrees Celsius. However, it is surprising that the temperature rises to about 1 million degrees Celsius as it moves upwards from the solar surface. This region above the solar surface is known as the corona and the phenomenon of heating the region is called coronal heating. There are several possible scientific theories to explain this phenomenon, but we have not yet been able to make a clear understanding. It should be noted that the corona region can only be seen when the sun is completely covered during a total solar eclipse. Since a total solar eclipse is a rare natural phenomenon, a device called a coronagraph is used to artificially cover the bright part of the sun so that the corona can be constantly seen. The seemingly calm sun that we always see is not calm at all. There is a variety of solar activity on the surface of the sun. Long-term studies have shown that these solar activities have a cyclic nature. This is known as the solar cycle, which lasts about 11 years. This means that during this 11-year period, solar activity goes from a solar minimum to a solar maximum and then again to a minimum. Two most notable solar events are solar flares and coronal mass ejections. Although we call it the sun's surface, we must remember that the sun doesn't have a solid surface like the earth and the moon. Sun's atmosphere doesn't have air like earth's atmosphere, but it is made up of plasma. A plasma is a collection of charged particles attached by a magnetic field. The random movement of the charged particles creates a complex arrangement of numerous strong magnetic fields. Solar activity is caused by the interaction of these magnetic fields. When large amount of energy associated with a twisted magnetic field is suddenly released, intense radiation is emitted, known as a solar flare. This radiation ranges from radio waves to optical and gamma waves. A CME, on the other hand, is a huge bubble of magnetically bound gas that erupts from the sun. The solar flares and CMEs have an adverse effect on Earth. Strong solar flares affect the Earth's ionosphere, causing radio blackouts. The charged particles and strong magnetic field that accompany a CME 
interact with the Earth's magnetic field, causing geomagnetic storms. This damages satellites used for communications, causes power outages on Earth, disrupts navigation, and damages electronic equipment and affects passengers in planes flying at high altitudes. The energetic particles threaten the lives of astronauts working on the space stations. Space weather is studied to determine the damage that can be done to Earth and man-made equipments around it from solar flares and CMEs caused by solar activity. Now the question is, how did people suddenly learn about space weather? Or how did it become so important? Modern civilization and social life heavily depends on electronic devices. These tools are very susceptible to extreme space weather conditions. After the invention of radio, people began to learn in the early 20th century that the sun often affected radio transmission. Since the 1960s, space weather has also been seen to affect satellites used for weather forecasting purposes. Here are some other famous events affected by space weather. In September 1941, at a crucial moment in an important basketball game in the United States, a geomagnetic storm interrupted television and radio broadcasts for 15 minutes, much to the disappointment of viewers and listeners. In 1979, the first US space station, Skylab, failed and entered Earth's atmosphere much earlier than scheduled. It crashed in the Australian desert. Space weather was thought to be the cause. In March 1989, a powerful geomagnetic storm caused a 9-hour power outage in Quebec City, Canada. In January 1994, three spacecraft Onik E1, Onik E2 and Intelsat K failed simultaneously under the influence of space weather. Many such incidents have already happened, noticed and unnoticed. Now the question is, when does solar activity become dangerous for Earth? Solar flares and CMEs can affect Earth only when they occur from the sun's surface toward the Earth. This is the second reason for choosing the L1 site to house the Aditya L1 spacecraft. Harmful particles and fields come towards the Earth through the L1 point. Therefore, this location is very important for early prediction of space weather. Let us now briefly discuss about the payloads attached to the spacecraft. I am not involved in this mission directly, However, the Indian Institute of Astrophysics, where I did my PhD research, is closely involved in the Aditya L1 mission. Several of my scientist friends are working on the most important payload of this mission, VELC. VELC will be the only coronagraph to study the sun's inner corona from space. The study of the inner corona by VELC with imaging and spectroscopy facilities will be of great help in understanding the origin of CMEs and the cause of coronal heating. Another notable payload on board is SUIT. Its job will be to investigate solar activities on the solar surface. The other two payloads, SOLEX and HELIOS, will study the X-ray radiation emitted by the Sun. Two other payloads, ASPEX and PAPA, have been attached to the spacecraft to detect and track particles heading towards Earth from the Sun. In addition, a seventh payload, magnetometer, is attached to the spacecraft to study the magnetic field coming towards Earth along with the CME. With all the payloads, we believe that Aditya L1 will help provide an accurate scientific explanation of the amazing phenomena taking place in the Sun. In addition, we strongly believe that the mission will be able to anticipate impending dangers by monitoring and analyzing detailed space weather to protect Earthlings from terrible situations. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned to Pragyanam for more informative videos ahead.